Good afternoon, everyone. We are thrilled to be here um, at the Y today with just really exciting news again. Um, I want to give special thanks to Mayor Scott, who whenever we talk about anything related to youth being active and involved um, is always not just yes, but how can we do more? Um, Councilman James Torrance, who I know is on his way and coming, um, and uh, John Hoey, who is here, who is chair of the Y in Central Maryland, uh, just for hosting this event here today, as well as our partners at Under Armour, the Fund for Educational Excellence, and the Weinberg Foundation. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, who's here today. And I also want to give a special thank you to all of the participating vendors um, who will contribute additional inter, uh, excuse me, additional interscholastic athletic opportunities and clinics to our middle school students. Um, we are looking forward to getting a chance to seeing some live swimming lessons um, in the pool after this. And I think it's important to know that today is in the context um, of an expansion of what uh, we were really happy to do last fall when we launched the expansion um, of middle school sports by implementing a public-private partnership offering seven interscholastic opportunities throughout the school year. It was very exciting. In the first quarter, we offered cross-country. I remember being there with the mayor. We had young ladies that day, I think, right, Mayor, who were running for the first time. And I remember um, a community track coach came over to me on that day, and I got a little choked up because he said, this is what our young girls need. They need to be um, active, involved. We had young women with um, their t-shirts there uh, for the first time in a cross-country meet. And this program is targeting grade six through eight um, students in city schools in particular because we know, I know as an educator, that those ages represented in grades six through eight are an incredibly important time in human development. It's the time where if you're spending time trying to uh, break into cars, your brain will hold on to that memory. But if you are spending time trying to beat the mayor um, in a track race, good luck. Uh, good luck, right? You are more than likely to remember that. And it's those kinds of experiences, particularly in this early adolescent period, that we are really excited to be able to bring. This is a vision not just about sports, but uh, about expanding opportunities for Baltimore's youth to discover their talents. Um, and let's be clear, just being a gold medalist in your particular sport doesn't necessarily mean that you will see you in Paris this summer, although we might. It could mean that you grow up to be mayor of the city of Baltimore, a councilman, um, business owner, or CEO of the Y. So this um, opportunity is about making sure we're investing our young people. And now it is my great pleasure um, to introduce uh, not just a former student and a former athlete, but the current mayor of Baltimore City, Mayor Brandon Scott. Thank you, Dr. S, with, with one a change. I'm a current man, current athlete. Uh, I'm still, still, a, still an athlete. Uh, we've been joined by uh, Councilman James Torrance. You have to excuse him. He went to Carver. They're notoriously slow, which is why it took him a little longer to get here today. Uh, but uh, for years, uh, the partners like the one standing with us today have pro provided programming for our students. And we know how important uh, sports are for our young people. But never before has this programming been coordinated by the district to ensure it's available to students across our school system. I'm so excited that the district is piloting this partnership with Baltimore Rowing, First Tee Golf, Game on Fitness, uh, uh, Girls in the Game, Girls on the Run, Gooseneck Sports, Harlem Lacrosse, the National Coalition of Women's Athletics, Soccer Without Borders, Squash Wives, the Little Leagues, the Y in Central Maryland, thank you, John, and Whole Person, Whole Life Sports. Today, we get to see the promise and potential of this partnership and one partnership in particular. 
We're going to get to see uh, our middle school students learning to swim here at the historic Drew Hill Y, the same Y where Justice Thurgood Marshall learned to swim. It is not lost on, on me uh, uh, who is in the pool today, uh, black and brown kids from Baltimore. We know uh, that black children are three times as likely to drown as white kids, and 64% of black children cannot swim. In fact, as we're sitting here talking today, my son, Sarone, is in Middle Branch learning how to swim. But formal swim lessons, like uh, the ones happening behind us or downstairs right now, are proven to reduce uh, drowning by 88%. Through this partnership with the Y, more kids will learn how to swim. And not just swim. With City Schools expanding middle school athletics through vendor-sponsored programming, students will learn how to run. And because this is also a recruiting measure, if you want to win gold medals in track and you're in middle school, go to Mervo High School. <laughs> the trophies don't lie. But you can run, row, box, play golf, squash, soccer, volleyball, and more. Uh, these vendor-provided sports are building on the seven uh, that the district announced they were providing this past fall, including my beloved cross-country uh, flag football uh, during the first quarter of the year, indoor bocce and volleyball during quarter two, basketball during quarter three, and uh, track and field and bocce happening right now in the final quarter. I want to commend uh, Dr. S and her team at Baltimore City Schools, most notably these fine ladies from athletics who know athletics in and out and spend a lot of time with me at different events, being obnoxious in support of our young people. Uh, but uh, for that work, City Schools here in Baltimore has the most comprehensive middle school sports program of any urban district in these United States of America. And that is not something that we should just gloss over because there was a time as i said before where there was no organized middle school sports and now we have more than any other urban district across this country and as a current athlete and former youth athlete coach of middle school basketball by the way mentor and now mayor nothing uh, makes me more proud to say how we have grown to support our young people because we know that they're not just learning how to swim or how to run, or how to play soccer, or basketball, or flag football. They're learning, again, how to push themselves, how to challenge themselves, how to work as a team, how to uh, solve complex problems, not just alone, but as a unit. Through sports, you grow as an individual, you grow as a group of people, and we have to continue to allow our young people to have access to these high quality, this high-quality program so they can grow into the best version of themselves. I will now turn it over to John Hoy from the Wild Central Maryland to talk about what this partnership means to one of our strongest partners in the city, the Wild Central Maryland, who don't just do sports. They do so many other things for us. We, I know that I'll be visiting summer camps with them this summer, as always, to see all of the things that they are putting into our young people and family across the city of Baltimore. John? Thanks everyone, thanks for being here. Thank you, Mayor Scott, Dr. Santelisis, and all the other uh, partners that are here who are engaged in getting kids active. Um, you know, we believe at the Y that it takes a community. Um, and so we love working with partners with school system, the city, all the other great um, organizations that are getting kids active. You, you covered the ground, Mayor Scott, so I'm not going to repeat your speech. Um, but you, you really laid out the, the benefit of getting kids active and engaged. It's the physical part of it, but it's also a, giving them a sense of purpose and structure. And, you know, I think our city is a great city and our city's future is predicated on one thing, on our young people. And it's what we do to them and for them and with them and alongside them that determines, you know, where we go as a city. Uh, at the Y, we're 100% behind these young people. Um, we, as you mentioned, are working with them in so many of the schools, uh, our Ys, our summer camps, our enrichment programs. We have a councilman here, James Torrance, who we like to still, even though he's, you know, he's grown up now, we still call him a Y kid. You know, James was uh, a Y Youth and Government 
uh, uh, he, hero, I'll call him. He, uh, he was the governor of our youth and government program statewide. And uh, so I think, you know, we have a living example standing right here of, of what the Y can do. Uh, so the other thing I just want to mention is where we're standing. And you referenced it, Mayor, the historic Y here in Druid Hill, which opened in 1916. It's one of the oldest historically African-American wise in the country. And we, we view this as a treasure. Uh, we are constantly uh, reinvesting in it, reimagining what it is it can be, because a why is never one thing. It's a lot of things, and a why has to continue to be relevant. So we're, I was joking uh, with Dr. Santelisis, we're constantly running capital campaigns to reinvest in this building because we want to reinvest in this neighborhood, in this community, and this city. So we're excited to be here. I'm excited to see kids swim. Um, kids need to learn how to swim. Whether, you know, very few kids will grow up to be Olympic swimmers, but kids that can learn how to swim are safer kids, and we all want that. And uh, the Y teaches more kids to swim than any organization in this country. So. We, uh, we're excited to have some kids here today, but we want kids here every day learning how to swim. So thanks everyone for coming and let's go check it out. Take the questions first. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you for those remarks. And we know that the, the councilman as his first role as governor, uh, he had an executive order that he was not to pick up a basketball. So we're so happy uh, that, that he didn't have to do that. Any question from our friends in the media? Hi, question. Um, this might be for Dr. Santelis as well, but um, talk to us about what the actual implementation of adding swimming to our sports website looks like throughout the county for these schools. Oh, and since you're, can you please state your name as well for us? Thank you. Um, Ms. Tanisha Montgomery, the coordinator of athletics for city schools and have been um, working to coordinate a lot of our middle school sports and partnerships. Um, so one of the things that was important was we kind of took a need to see what the kids were interested in and then also where we saw the need. Um, water safety is a very big one. So along with the Y and our partners at Baltimore Rowing, we thought that that was an opportunity to get as many kids in schools as possible directly in the community into the water and to feel safe in the water. So once they have those skills. Um, so we actually have three schools right now that are working with the Y um, that's closest to their communities um, to have those students enroll and be a part of the after school programming where they're actually learning to swim and, why, or, and water safety. Um, we're hoping to expand upon that. So we do have a little bit more room if there are any schools um, who are interested in finding out more again, specifically for our after school programming um, to get the kids involved and engaged. Um, but to feel safe in the water. Okay. So since they're learning how to swim, and this is sort of like a, a, that type of learning program, is it also going to be a competition as well with maybe other schools once it like progresses and expands? Does that make sense? Like, will this be a sport that's competitive? Um, we will look into that. However, at our middle school level, we really focus on the instructional piece. Um, these are also pipeline to our high school sports. So we do have high school swimming in Baltimore City Public Schools. So our hope is that, and I won't call out any schools in particular, um, but our hope is that the students feel comfortable and they learn, and then they would like to move on to do competitive swimming, particularly as they matriculate up to high school. So we do have that at the high school level, but middle school is we really want to focus on them learning and their development. And last question, when is this actually kickstarting? Uh, when will they uh, actually be involved in the program? Is that today or is that, is that school year versus that? They're actually in the water now. Um, we've started this and it's been going on for a few weeks now. Um, so a lot of the groundwork has been laid um, to make sure that we get the interest and that we put it out there to try to get as many students involved as possible. So they have actually been going at it for a few weeks now. Anybody else? And just to add uh, uh, for you, uh, we had when we were in, in the fall where right? we know that like we had a running competition. So uh, there's a mix and match when you're talking about with sports. And, and I think uh, we had laid out what I think is a good balance of how we do that, preparing, preparing them and starting with swimming and allowing those who are running to in other sports and basketball, obviously, to participate in competition. All right, let's go see.